going live. Because we're on the air. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. I don't know where you are. This is Lem Mooney coming to you from another live with Lem. And we have, as you know, we have a really special guest for you today. We also have a teeny tiny little bit of echo, I think. Uh, we'll deal with that in a moment. But let me just welcome everybody. I see Chris is on. Welcome, Chris. And Christy just jumped on. Hello, Christy. And Rick and Rena. Welcome, Rena. And Laura is, of course, here. We're going to talk about her in a minute. Ray, I'm sorry. I was just reading down the list. Uh, of course, Laura is here. So we have we have a really special guest today. We have Laura Parrish with us. And Laura is, she's a phenomena in the business. So she's she started off four years ago. I don't think she had any background at that time. We'll let, we'll let her tell us about her background. She started off four years ago, and she's just rocking it. She's uh, L4, or almost L4, very close, knocking on the door of L4. Uh, she makes a substantial monthly income, more than most of us, and uh, she's just an incredible lady. She's a stay-at-home mom. She's got two children, and you got to just love it to death when somebody picks up the way she did and just takes off with it and goes. So, Laura, welcome. Really glad to have you here today. I'm really excited. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Len. Yeah, I love it. You know, what I really love most is, as I, as I mentioned to you, I was a single parent for 14 years. Now, I understand you're not a single parent, but I still have tremendous respect for you as a mother, staying at home, taking care of your kids. And I'm going to assume that that's what motivated you to get started in online marketing or network marketing to begin with. Yeah, we, we, um, I was a restaurant manager. My husband is a restaurant manager. I was a restaurant manager before we had children. And, uh, you know, when we decided to have children, it was like, well, we don't want a stranger to raise our kids. So, you know, he made a decent enough income that I could be a stay at home mom, fortunately. Um, but we literally were just, you know, just skating by. We weren't, we didn't have anything extra. So we went from, you know, a six figure income with no kids to having kids and income cut in half. And that certainly is not the lifestyle that we were used to, accustomed to, or that we wanted. And it certainly isn't the lifestyle you wanted for your kids, right? Right. Yeah. I've been there. What kind of restaurant, by the way? Just curious. Just curious. Uh, I worked in a restaurant for several years when I was in college. That's how I managed to get my, pay my way through college. So just curious. Just uh, American food franchise restaurant, like you know, you think of Applebee's or Charlie's, things like that. Do you uh, are you a franchisee or uh, do, you, do you own it? Do you own the franchise? No, no, I, no, I do not. I was just a manager. Yeah, cool. So, so the so how did you find network marketing then? I mean, most people, well, just how did you find network marketing? What got you <laughs> started? <laughs> Facebook, Facebook. You know, I was just messing around, and I saw this little blurb that said, "Hey, you know, I I'm I work from home and I make decent money, and if you're interested in doing the same, send me a message, and we'll go from there." And I, I did it. You know, I just happened to randomly come across that. So you jumped into a network marketing opportunity uh, initially. And actually, today is May 5th, 2016, and this happened on May 4th, 2012. So yesterday was literally my four-year anniversary of working from home for myself. And at, and at that point in time, you had absolutely zero background, zero experience. No, I didn't have any experience whatsoever. The, the only thing that I could think of. You know, was that 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 gnawing and nagging in the back of my mind that there has to be more. You know, is this is is this all there is to life? You know, you have kids, and then you know you, you stay home and you take care of them. But what about fulfilling the desires and the needs that I had before I had kids? I was a very successful person. Um, I enjoyed you know bringing home a good paycheck and living the way that I wanted to live. And I I knew there had to be a way to be able to do that online um, and, and take care of my kids at the same time. And, and I thought to myself, you know, uh, all I do on Facebook really, it was my social outlet because as a stay at home mom, you know, you're with kids all day. Uh, so to have any kind of adult interaction, I was using Facebook. You know, I was one of those annoying people that you see posting all the time. Hey, I just finished the laundry. Hey, I just loaded the dishwasher, you know, just talking about my life. And people are like, who cares about that stuff, right? But people actually pay attention to that because everybody else 
the same situation that you're in, right? So I thought to myself, if I can get this much interaction just by talking about what I do, you know, no matter how insignificant I think it may be, I wonder if I actually found something to do from home that was legitimate um, that I could be successful with and just talk about that the same way that I talk about my life, how that would go for me. And that's really the, the premise on, you know, how I got started and, and all the success that I've had because everything that I've done in network marketing has been free. And it's all been through Facebook. So you're the, you're the, 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 the there's one person that is frequently known as the queen of Facebook. It sounds like you're a runner up queen of Facebook. Right. <laughs> what, so what do you find is, what works for you? What are the best strategies on Facebook? If you were telling people how to get started, what would you tell them? Um, stop trying to sell things. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so amazing. Um, because we all really, and, and you know, I can't speak for everyone, but I'll say 99.999% of people get into this business, get into this industry because they want to work for themselves. They don't want to work for a boss. They want to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. But the motivating factor is to make money and to make a lot of money and to do it on your own terms. And I found very quickly um, when I got started online, I was, you know, I was busting my hump. I, you know, was working hours and hours and hours, and I wasn't having a lot of success at the beginning. And I, I was like beating my head against the wall because I knew I was doing the right things. I knew I was taking the right action steps. I was marketing. I was here. I was showing up, but nothing was happening. And then I realized it was because I was trying to force things, you know. Um, I was trying to, it's kind of like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink type thing. Uh, you know, when you find something that's real and that works, and then other people out there are like, oh, that just, that's not real, or that's a scam, or that doesn't work, or whatever. If you know it works, you, like, if you're like me, the type of personality I have, I want to make sure, like, I want to make sure they know it's real, you know? And you can't do that, because not everybody is going to, you know, believe you. Not everybody has an open mind, you know? So you can't force people, but I was constantly trying to make people believe in what I was doing instead of instead of listening to what other people need. And my motivating factor was because I wanted to make money for me. I got into this business so I could make money for me and make a lot of money and stay at home, and that was my driving force. But my breakthrough really came, and I really started to make money when I stopped worrying about making money when I stopped trying to force people to believe in what exactly it is that I was doing and really legitimately started listening to people, you know, who were coming to me and kind of asking what it was I was doing instead of me trying to sell them, well, this is what I do and go here to this website and sign up here and do this, 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 you know, and give them the plan instead of giving them that, stepping back and talking to them and saying, hey, how did you find me? Why are you interested? Why do you want to do this? Um, you know, why did you reach out to me? Uh, what is it that you desire in your life? What is it that you need? What is your situation right now? Because when you listen to people, they understand and believe that you honestly are genuinely concerned about what's going on with them. And when you, when you convey that, people will join you and they will follow you to the ends of the earth because they know that you're, you're serious about helping them, that it's not about lining your own pockets. So... My breakthrough really came when I stopped worrying about making money and started worrying about helping other people. It's really about being of service to others. So for people just getting started, trying to figure out what to do, how to do it, I, I feel your frustration because you're trying to work so hard and force your way in to have success, success, success. But the success really comes when you step back and begin to be of service to people and listen to people the way that you would want someone to listen to you when you first got started. And that, you know, then the, the money and the income, it just comes second nature. That's, that is really powerful. I mean, it's just, yeah, uh, Ray, great message. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I think you're right. So many of us, we get into the business and what, the reason we come in is, and in fact, a lot of people start into this business in panic mode because they need money and they need it next week. So it's like, well, I don't have any money to spend. I don't have time to spend on the phone. I can't prospect people. Uh, 
but I have to have money next week or I'm going to lose my house. I mean, I, I've talked to people who are in that exactly that situation. Like, if I don't make money in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to, I can't make my house pay, but I'm going to lose my house. And they're just pure panic mode. And of course, you can't help them. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, not going to, they're not going to win, are they? Yeah, it's definitely, it definitely takes a mindset shift and, and looking at things in a little bit of a different light, you know. So many people, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard it in the four years that I've been doing this. I'm not really sure how long you've been in the industry, but I've heard so often uh, I shouldn't have to pay to work, right? I shouldn't have to, to pay to work from home, you know. I don't, I don't have to pay to go to my job. And people don't understand that you actually do pay to go to your job. <laughs> And, and quite often you pay more to go to your job than you do to work for yourself. So understanding that mindset shift uh, is a real powerful freedom that comes with that. And um, also understanding that, you know, with what we do, uh, working for ourselves, we have the opportunity not to trade our time for income, but we literally have the ability to control how much money we make as fast as we want or as slow as we want. You know, how many times have people you know, had the transmission go out on their car. Like, and if they don't have a car, they, you know, can't go anywhere and they need $2,000 like that. You literally have the ability to create your income uh, as quickly as you want. It's just about sitting down and putting the blinders on and doing the work. And when I say doing the work, it means helping people, being of service to other people. The more you're of service to other people, the more your, your income is going to increase. So I'm going to guess you spend a lot of hours on the phone every day. I see a smile. I don't hear an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. I, did, I must not have heard the whole thing that you said. What was the question? Oh, I, I said I'm going to guess that you spend a lot of hours on the phone every day. You spend time talking to people. Oh, no, I don't. I don't spend. I don't spend any time on the phone. Uh, really? You know the. I'm sorry. I said really. No, I don't spend any time on the. Phone. The only time I spend on the phone, you know, there are some people who. You know, we'll ask a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions, and um, you know, most most of the questions that they ask, I have already you know answered to eight million other people. So I have this little vault where I just keep all my answers stored that I can just pull up and say this, that, and the other. But sometimes people, you know, they want to talk to people, and I get that. And so sometimes I'll say, hey, you know, are you free? I've got like two minutes. You know, I'll give you a call, and it kind of blows people away because in this day and age, they don't expect. That someone would actually get on the phone with them you know 20 years ago we were dying for automation you know like yes you can get on a call and press this button and it'll take you year and year and now people actually want to talk to people um, I don't spend a lot of time on the phone but I'm not opposed to it if someone you know if I feel like it's just easier to talk to someone I'll be like hey you know I'll get on the phone with people it's not a big deal uh, but the, the great thing about this business is it's not necessary um, and there are a lot of people who aren't okay, you know, talking to strangers on the phone. And, and you know what? You don't have to be okay with that. You don't have to talk to people on the phone. So that's an interesting perspective because, yeah, a lot of the people and, uh, and, and several people that we've had on Lunch with Len in the last, uh, well, I'll just say a few months, several people, are big advocates of you have to be on the phone. You have to be talking to people continuously. Uh, so it's a different perspective. So when you say that you're uh, you're helping people, you're serving people, are you doing this all via chat? Yes, yes. Um, everything I do is through like Facebook Messenger. I do obviously I have a huge subscriber list, and I do email back and forth with people as well. But another thing that I like to do is you know people can always reach out to me anytime that they want, and I and and. My, my tomb name, you see the TNS up there, is Team No Sleep. And it stands for Success Never Sleeps. Not that I never sleep, even though it's rare. Um, but it's literally about, you know, you can message me anytime you want. And if I can't get back to you, I'll at least acknowledge, you know, hey, I see your message. I'll get back to you when I can. But I really like to, to listen and hear what people have to say. And a lot of times, I'll actually cut a video. And my, my response to them will be in video format so that they can see what I have to say, you know, cut a two minute video or a five minute video or if necessary, a 10 minute video, just so I can say, hey, I'm, I'm acknowledging, you know, what, what you said to me and, and I appreciate X, Y, Z, whatever your situation is. Uh, and this is how I think I can be of best service to you because it's kind of like, 
a grocery store, right? Everybody has grocery stores all over the world, but when you go to the grocery store, Lynn, you might buy this, this, and this, but you're not going to buy everything. And when I go to the grocery store, that grocery store might offer me the same things that it offers you, but I don't want the same things that you buy. I buy, you know, this, this, this and this. So you can't just, that's why I'm saying to new people, stop trying to sell because how can you sell something to someone if you don't know what it is that they need, right? You have to listen first so that you can show people how you can best be of service to them. Because if you're just trying to fit everyone in this generic box, you know, and you're an XYZ company and you're like, okay, you need to join my company and this is why, because you're going to make a lot of money. Well, a lot of money isn't the most important thing to everybody. As a matter of fact, to most people, money isn't the most important thing at all, right? It's about, you know, being happy. Uh, contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, money doesn't create happiness. It just helps, you know, it's a tool. Um, but you, you can't fit everyone into a box. So you don't know what to serve up to people if you don't know what it is that they actually desire and what it is that they need. And when you try to serve up something to someone or sell something to someone, it's not what they want, it's not what they need, then you're completely turning them away and you're, you're disabling yourself from being able to be of service to people. So you're really hindering things instead of helping when you just try to sell something. So, so, so what's your process then? Are you, how are you finding leads? Are you uh, posting in groups? Uh, do you have a blog? Let's start there. Do you have a blog? I do have a blog. I do have a blog. I've had a blog for a while. I, um, am an, I, I, it's funny, and when I first got into this industry, I'm like, what's a blog? I didn't even know what a blog was, much less how to write one. It's like, what is a blog? How do you, how do you write a blog? Um, and for about nine months, I didn't blog at all. And then, you know, finally I sat down with one of my mentors and he's like, dude, you do videos, just cut a video, put it on a page, write one sentence and you've done a blog, you know, um, type thing. And then what, what really taught me that I was actually a blogger was my team because they said to me, they said, you realize that what you do on Facebook is blogging, right? And I'm like, huh? You know? So I learned from my team because you know, when, when something happens that's powerful, that you, you know, just something incredible, powerful, that you're grateful for, you know, that really touches your heart or whatever during your day and you sit down and you share that, okay, which is what I would do oftentimes. And it ends up being this long post. My team's like, you know, that's a blog, right? You, you are pouring out content from your heart and value from your heart. What you're doing on Facebook is blogging. Put it on a blog, right? And so I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So then I started blogging. But I really had a, um, what's the word? I had an aversion to it because when people talk about blogging, everyone is so scared of it. And I was too for the simple fact that, you know, everybody talks about this thing called SEO, search engine optimization. And I always hated reading people's stuff because I felt like it was written like a robot. You could tell that people are writing it to sound a certain way, to have a bunch of the same keywords in it so that they could get good rankings on Google. Because that's, you know, when, when you have a question about something, everyone goes to google.com, they type in their question, and then all the stuff comes up. Those are articles and blogs. The goal is to get on the front page of Google, of course, but you have to have good SEO to do that. So often when you read people's blogs, it will sound like, their blog was specifically written just so they could rank well, but it doesn't, it's not a very flowing article. It doesn't sound natural or good. And I refuse to be that person because when I write, I want to write from the heart. Plus I want to get good SEO. And I finally, I finally accomplished that. You know, it took some time, uh, but I learned just to, you know, when I write, I just type the way I speak. It doesn't have to be all grammatically correct and stuff like that. And then you just go back and edit it. Uh, you know, and, and if you say the, some of the same sentences or keywords a few times, you know, you make sure that's in there. But I learned how to write in a way that when you read my blogs, it actually, you feel like you're hearing me speak it. Um, and it's been very successful for me. I would say 90% of my blogs uh, rank top five on front page of Google. And I've also outranked authors um, and been contacted by authors for outranking them on their own books uh, for doing reviews. Uh, and have been uh, sent books from publication companies and asked to do reviews on their books, uh, their author's books for, for my SEO capabilities. I've 
outranked Moz Paw, Wikipedia, and, and a lot of things, but it really came from having a passion to just be me. And that's the best advice I can give anyone in this industry is you've got to be yourself, right? You have to be you. That's the best thing that you can do in this industry. So let me go back to what I started to ask you a minute ago. Uh, where do you find most of your leads from? I mean, you're obviously on Facebook. We know that. How are you finding them? Posting in groups, or what are you doing to find leads? You know, I used to be such a, such a person against groups because when you go into groups, often you'll see like 50 posts in 60 seconds, and it's all like this frustrating pictures of people photoshopped in front of homes they don't own with cash they don't have and cars that they don't. And it's like, like, oh, I get so frustrated. So I refuse to, to play into that because I just don't think it's right. It just looks fake. Even if even if what they do is completely legitimate and real, okay, which it could be, it just doesn't look good because it looks the same. It doesn't stand out from everything else. It doesn't feel like it's providing value. So for a very long time, I didn't post in groups. Quite honestly, I found most all of my leads by communicating with people who had the same interests as me like liked pages you know if you're a huge uh sports enthusiast let's say a major league baseball fan or a national football league fan and you you know like the tennessee titans or i'm a new york giants fan you know and talking to people on those same pages who like the same pages and communicating with them you know a lot of people might say well it's spam if you talk about working from home on something that doesn't have anything to do with working from home but here's the thing I dare say that 90% of the population would love to work from home if they if they actually understood and knew that it that it's possible, right? Uh, but most people don't understand and know that it's possible because we're all ingrained in life that you have to go to school if you want to be anything in life. You know, you have to go get a college degree and then work 40 years. You know, retire and do all this. We're not taught that there's another way. So I don't feel like it's out of line at all to talk to people that have the same interests as me about what it is that I do because I'm here to educate people. I'm here to educate people and say, hey, this is what I do if you're interested. And, you know, people will say, well, how do I know? It's not a scam. How do I know this? How do I know that? And, and the honest truth, all you can say is, like I said at the beginning, I would try to, like, beat a dead horse. But I learned all you can say is, you know what? I can tell you that it's not fake until I'm blue in the face. But... The goodness, the honest truth is I can't make you believe anything. All I can do is share my experience, which has been awesome, you know, and beyond that, you have to use your own best judgment and decide what's best for yourself and your family, but know that if you're interested, it is legitimate. Uh, you can change your life. You have every capability to live any way that you want to live and do anything that you want to do, and if that interests you, then I'm here to be of service to you. So I really started out that way. Um, building my list and talking to people and communicating with people. And then uh, I did start I did start doing things in groups because I found a way to be different. I found a way to stand out, which felt good. And that was, and this was way before Facebook Live came out, right? There was no Facebook Live when I started because that was recent. But, you know, I would uh, quite often after my team calls, because at the end of my team call, I have a motivational section uh, where I just talk about what has inspired me for the week or motivated me so I can help motivate my team. And I get so pumped up when I get off those calls, I would immediately shoot a video, like three to six minutes, something like that, and I would share just the motivational, inspirational part of what I had shared on my team call. And then I would go into the groups, and I would post it. And it wasn't a pitch to come join my deal. It was like, hey, guys, my name's Laura Parrish. I'm coming to you live from my home in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And I just got off an amazing team call and I want to share some content and value with you that I shared with my team that I think will be beneficial in your life and in your business if you have a business. You know, and then I would share whatever that content and value was. And then at the end just say, Hey, if you're interested in subscribing to my newsletter so you can learn of the things that I share, go to whatever website. But it's not a pitch to join my deal. You know what I mean? But right. people love that because they're getting they're getting content. They're getting value. They feel like you're helping them, that you're not just saying, hey, come join my thing, right? Because everybody says, come join my thing. So put out value and basically attract them to your to your blog, to your newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple of questions. I don't know if you can see the chat. Can you see the chat? I cannot. You cannot. That's not good. That's not good. Okay. 
Okay. Ray Tar was asking, what are the three most important elements of marketing online in your opinion? What are the three most important elements of marketing online? Um, well, communication, obviously. You, you have to have you have to have the ability to communicate with people. You have to be able to um, be chatty with people. Uh, and not just, you know, like I said, try to try to force force them into, you know, buying something or selling them something. Um, so being able to talk to people, being open to listening to what other people have to say, you know, and being repetitive, like repeating back things to people, because sometimes people will listen or, will, you know, you can listen to what someone has to say to you, but then you just offer a solution without repeating back to them what you've heard them say. And when you repeat back to someone, you're enforcing in their mind that you actually listen to them, which, you know, it all goes into communication. But the, uh, those are a couple things that I think are really, really key and really important uh, to be relatable. Uh, you have to have, be a part of a really great community. Um, and, and I'm blessed to be a part of a great community. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to be working online and working for yourself, and, and, you know, it's three C's. If, if you're an internet marketer, you've probably heard, like, create, capture, convert, right? That's right. what most people's three C's are, but that's not my three C's. Um, I actually, uh, you know, when I was transitioning uh, from a company a few months ago, I got on my 72-inch whiteboard right back here, and I started writing just by, you know, it was just me and myself to fulfill my own heart. Like, what, what, does, what is it that Laura Parrish needs to be able to be successful in this industry because I've already had a lot of success in the industry but what what is it that 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 my soul needs to be passionate and you know to continue to inspire and change people's lives and I started writing and the next thing I know I was like oh there's a C and there's a C and there's a C so I came up with my own three C's and really what it is is I have to be a part of an amazing community that has just a, a, an amazing culture that also has a great compensation plan. Because to me, so many companies, you know, they either, you know, say they focus on the new person, but then they end up focusing on only leadership, right? And, you know, if, if you're a leader and you don't care about people and you just care about making money, then sure, you can use people to make a bunch of money to meet your ends, but that doesn't feel good, right? I mean, it doesn't feel good for me. Um, I want to help people change their lives, and my goal and my desire is to help the person who is just like me, you know what I mean, who knew nothing, who, you know, didn't have the best past. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober for over five years now, you know, so my goal is to show people that it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, that you have every capability to change your life and live the way that you want to live and do the things that you want to do. So, you know, it's important to me that I can reach those people and be a part of something, a culture and a community with a compensation plan that benefits the new person as much as it benefits someone who's been around for eight years, you know, uh, because that's just the, that's just the right thing. You know what I mean? So for me, my three C's are, you know, community, culture, and compensation. Uh, because if you can tie those three things together with a company and you're passionate about what you do, which is helping other people that that's my passion, that's my why to be of service to other people, then you just can't go wrong. You know, so many people wake up on Monday mornings and they're like, oh, the dreaded week, or they go to bed Sunday night and they're like, oh, the dreaded week. And I got to tell you, Monday, Monday is my favorite day of the week because to me, it's a fresh new start. It's a fresh new opportunity to listen, to be open for people to reach out and say, hey, your story sounds like my story. Um, you have something that I want. How did you do that? Can you give me direction? Can you show me guidance? Can you tell me how I can do that too? And that's one of the reasons like team no sleep. I never want to sleep because I'm always afraid that someone's going to be ready, you know, to reach out and say, help me. And I'm not going to be there. You know what I mean, I love what I do. So it was community culture and compensation, right? That's right. Okay. Cause I typed it into the chat. So I was hoping that I typed it in right. Hey, I thought, okay. I thought I thought you'd have something to add to that, Jackson. Do you have anything you want to say, Jackson Kelly? Um, uh, I got Chris. Chris. Chris asked, uh, "What's how do we find your yeah? How do we find your website? Is it what's the name? What's the name of your website? Uh, for my blog or for just 
my, my capture page. My, it's crossthestart.com. It's www.crossthestart.com. And I'll explain that really quickly. People are like, what's that mean? What is cross the start? Cross the start? Yes, C R O S S T H E S T A R T. Dot com. Yep. And people were like, what does that mean? And, and here's the thing you know, it's not about the end result, right? It's about the journey. But people always think about winning, you know, like winning the race. Well, in order to win a race, you have to run it. And in order to run it, you have to start. You have to cross the start line before you cross the finish line. So, you know, to me, it's like people say they want this and they say they want that and they want to have this and they want to have that, but they've got to take action. It's about more than decision. It's about decision uh, and action. And, you know, it just becomes second nature once you get used to it. It's kind of like, you know, people don't think about this. If I could just really quickly, you know, what, what do you eat for breakfast? Do you eat Cheerios for breakfast? Do you eat waffles for breakfast? Do you, you know, what, what do you eat for breakfast? Well, what do you do when you get up? Do you think about every single step and action that you have to take to get your Cheerios? Do you think about opening the drawer, taking out a spoon, opening the refrigerator, taking out the milk, taking the lid off, pouring the milk? Get you, like Nobody thinks like that. You just do it because that's what you do. It's the action steps. But if you actually you know, break it down, you actually do a lot, right? You do a lot to eat <laughs> you do a lot to do everything you do in your life um, and this this is no different right it becomes second nature it just becomes a part of who you are my business is no different than than my personal I am my business and my business is me well uh, you're doing you're just obviously doing something right you're doing an awesome job it's just amazing to see someone as far along as you are after only four years in the business uh, and, and the thing is that's interesting is there's a lot of people that make very rapid progress, but they take 18 years to do it. But they what? There's a lot of people that make very rapid progress, but they, they take 18 years to, to do it. I mean, oh. yeah, there are stories of people that are overnight success. There was a post, I saw a post today about somebody who was an overnight success after 18 years. Um, mm -hmm. so you're, you're, doing, you're doing a marvelous a, um I, I don't see, is there any other questions coming in from the chat? I don't see any other questions. Uh, what I really heard in the summary is, is that what you're most, you're not doing anything else, no Instagram, Twitter, or anything, just pure Facebook. No, I do have my, um, my Twitter account is connected to my Facebook. So when I post something on Facebook, it like auto posts to Twitter, but I don't, I don't really even pay attention to Twitter. I mean, sometimes I log in because someone, you know, sends me a message or whatever and I respond to it, but I, I don't. Don't do anything but Facebook. Hey. Okay. All right then. Hey, um, I see your question, Steve. I'll I'll get that one uh, later. Um because uh, I know the answer. Um uh, is there anything else, any last minute things you'd like to add, Laura, before we uh, we let you go away? I told you it'd only be a half hour and you had to send your husband to get your kids from school today, right? How old are your kids, by the way? Uh, my son will be six next month, so he's five, and my daughter is eight. And like I said, I've been doing this for four years, so six minus four, he was two, and she was four. So I started, you know, they were young when I started. But you know what? Here, here's the, here's the, here's, you asked if I wanted to add one last thing. This is what I'll add. Um, doing, working for yourself from the comfort of your home uh, in internet marketing um, will change not just your life and your finances, but that of your family. And I know that might sound like cliche, but let me just share this really quickly. My mother-in-law came to visit um, a couple years ago, and we were standing in my kitchen, and my daughter was in the living room, and my mother-in-law was telling me how proud of me that she was, you know, for, you know, all the things that we've done, and, like, we bought our first home ever, you know, because of, you know, the business that I'm in, and, uh, you know, being out, and we bought a new Suburban, and all this stuff, and she was just telling me how proud she was. And my daughter overheard, and like I said, this was a couple years ago, so she was about six at the time, five and a half, six. Anyway, she came running into the kitchen, and she grabbed on my mother-in-law's shirt. She tugged it, and she looked up, and she said, Gigi, Gigi, because that's what she calls her grandma. And Gigi looked down and said, yes, Samantha. And she said, my mommy was born to change people's lives. And I have to tell you, folks, in that moment, that, that's what it's all about, right? That brought to you. 
I've never been more proud. Is the money great? Yeah. Is it always great? No, it's entrepreneurship. There'll be months that you have that are great and there'll be months that you're like, shit, this sucks, right? But quite honestly, it's about those moments. It's about the fact that you have the ability to impact and change people's lives, not only your children's life, because for my child to, to look at me and to look at someone, you know, in the family and say that about me, from the type of person I used to be, because like I said, I'm a recovering alcoholic, right? I didn't used to be the best person. And this has completely transformed my life. Um, but you have the ability to affect and influence people. Your voice has such an incredible power. You have no idea. There are people's lives out there that you watching me right now, listening to my words, as you see them coming out of my mouth, you can affect and change people's lives that I can't because your story is different than mine. You can, you have the power to change someone's life that I wouldn't be able to touch. Just like there are people's lives that I could change that you would be able to touch because we all have our own stories. But here's the thing, no matter what's going on in your life or what you've done or what you've been through, good or bad or indifferent, share it because there's two choices in life. We can be selfish and not share our past and our stories because we're afraid of judgment and embarrassment, or we can be selfless and we can share it because we know that someone somewhere out there is going through exactly what we've been through and they're alone and they're scared and they just wish they knew that someone else could understand them. And you sharing your story lets people know that you're not alone and that there is hope. Because that's the only thing we can really give anyone in this world is hope. And you have that ability. So don't think for a moment. Don't discount yourself. Every smile that you flash to someone, every word that you say can change someone's life. I love your passion. Absolutely love it. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Because so many people think they have nothing. What do I have to offer people? Everybody. Everybody was born a genius. They've just been de genius by growing up in the society. And they have to dig into them and find that genius again and bring it out of them. And everybody has it. Yes. Awesome. I'd love to keep talking. We're 10 minutes past the top of the hour. I promised you a half hour. Thanks for staying a little longer. Sure. Uh, I just give me about 30 seconds here real quick and then we'll, we'll shut it down unless I see another question. This is your last chance, folks, if you have any more questions. Tonight at 6 o'clock, Jackson and myself and Mario are launching Toxic Talk. It's going to be a half hour. Uh, it is a webinar. It's going to be every Thursday at 6 o'clock. And... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redirect all the attendees to the link for this webinar because it just went up a few minutes ago. So um, this is all brand new. It's just happening in real time. So toxic talk at 6 o'clock tonight. Tonight's focus is going to be what's in your toothpaste? Um, and for those of you who have come to my Saturday uh, Law of Attraction webinar, 8.30 Saturday morning, we will do part three, and I promise you this will be the final part of uh, – Power of Intention. And again, we've been following a lot of Wayne Dyer's Power of Intention, and we're going to wrap it up this Saturday, so 8.30 Saturday morning. There'll be a new link for that, too, because it's a new month. So the link for Saturday is not up yet. Look for it to go up later today. So Saturday morning for the uh, Dream with Len webinar series, finishing up law, uh, our Power of Intention. And tonight at 6 o'clock for the brand new launching tonight, Toxic Talk. So that's it. But again, I'm going to send a re I'm going to hit a redirect when I hit the stop broadcasting. I'm going to hit a redirect so that you can pick up the link. Anyone who wants to can pick up the link for tonight. And Laura, once again, thank you so much. It's been a been a real pleasure. Really enjoyed talking to you. Absolutely. I get one final one final question. What is the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you? I take it Facebook is the best way. <laughs> Yes, you can go to facebook.com forward slash free, that's F-R-E-E, -E, money, M-O-N-E-Y, mommy, M-O-M-M-Y. So facebook.com forward slash free money mommy. I love that, free money mommy. Okay. All right. And uh, as I promised you, there is a replay. It's being recorded. I'll put the replay up. It's in the Lunch with Len group. So that's where the replay will be for anybody who wants to grab it. And other than that, 
I'm going to hit redirect. Here we go. Three, two, one, zero. Bye, everybody. Uh, go. Here's the redirect. All right. Um, so everybody should have been redirected. I hope they are. They're disappearing. And uh, Laura, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. That was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, pardon me? I said thank you for having me on. Yeah, I, I, think, you're, I think you're awesome. I think you're awesome. Um, thank you. Can I have about 30 more seconds of your time? Sure. What I didn't want to say out there, out loud, and because we don't do any selling on Lunch with Len. We really just don't. Uh, but there's a, there's a bunch of the people that were on here that are, we're involved in a, in a, in a, in a toxic-free company, toxic-free organic uh, products for your home and your health and et cetera. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you would be open to taking a look at that because you said some things talking today. Uh, you said some things that I think you might be interested in knowing about, for example, things for your kids that are healthier than products you may be using right now in your home. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you'd be willing or interested to take a look, at least look at a couple short videos about what's going on. Yeah, um, you can see and, uh, it, and it, it is, it's an MLM opportunity, but it's, it's, it's what we're doing right now. If you, if you took a look at it, I think, I think you would love it. Uh, okay. uh, uh, anyhow, that's all. I'll, I'll send you a link in, your, in the uh, Facebook chat then for a couple short videos. And then okay. get back to me with, with if you want to learn more. Okay? Okay. Thank cool. you so much, Len. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.